Okay, so good evening, everyone. Lovely to see so many of you here this evening. And since we spoke last week, or since you know we had the lovely Shabbat discussion with the Kets last week, um, I know that um, on a Saturday night when we turned after that really special Shabbat, after we turned on our phones and we heard the news about Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs, it really shook all of our worlds. Um, and what I found really fascinating is how many people have reached out to me um, from all different places, um, sharing their our collective grief at having lost such a special person. So we thought it would be um, really important actually for people to be able to share some of the inspiration, some of the stories, some of the contact that they had with Rabbi Sachs over the time that you got to know him and, and some of the impressions that he made on you. So anybody who would like to start to share some of their memories. What I would um, mention is, and I think Richard may remember, but the when he had been appointed as chief rabbi but hadn't yet taken up office we had a bushy weekend in Bournemouth where he was our guest for the weekend um which was really quite quite a special weekend you know when when that was it as i say it was when he'd been been appointed but before he'd taken up office mm. And anything, so, uh, anything specific that sticks out from that weekend? Just how n normal he was, and it <laughs> was, uh, and how it was, oh, well, just call me Jonathan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anybody else want to share? Uh, I, uh, I remember him. Um, the uh, US, U.S. used to have a Volunteers Award every year, Volunteers Award Ceremony, uh, and more often than not he would come along. It was always held at St. John's Wood Shaw, mm -hmm. and I remember one year I was lucky enough to get a Volunteers Award, and I duly went up on the stage and uh, he shook my hand and put his arms around my shoulder. I've got a picture of that uh, in my hall because I'm very mm -hmm. proud of that. And uh, he, he had a few words to say to everybody who got an award, but you felt that you, you know, he was speaking just to you and very special words just for your particular award. Uh, and I'm reminded of that every day when I walk past a picture in my hall. And uh, uh, actually, there were three in, people in that picture originally. Um, mm -hmm. And another gentleman who'd come from an organisation and who also helped present the award. But because I just wanted to be seen with Rabbi Sachs, uh, when I had the photo done, I had it just done for him and me. So it looks <laughs> just like the two of us. So that, that's the first time I've confessed that to anybody. So don't <laughs> but I think, Stuart, the, what, what was fascinating was when he met you and, you know, he was giving you a prize or he was shaking your hands or whatever it was. It was as if you were good friends. He had this way of, even yeah. if he doesn't know people, he made you feel like, you were so important to him yeah. that you were there. He's, the table, that's he's, he's, he's actually got his arm around my shoulder, sort of holding me close to him. It really was very special. Yeah. I can remember when he came to visit us in Northampton, you know, which is a really small community. And he didn't have to, but he'd been away somewhere the weekend. Um, and he made a detour to come and see us. And he addressed us and then there was um, a small reception after us. But I remember him addressing us as friends and I can't remember exactly what, it, what he said, but I do remember him making us, a, a, a tiny community, feel very important and how important we were to the whole fabric of, you know, of the country. And, you know, that, you know, I, I lost the words now, but... It just made us feel special and important and that we mattered, even though we were perhaps out in the sticks a bit, but we were also important. Yeah. I, I think that really does highlight, you know, one of his incredible strengths was he just made people feel like they mattered. 
he thank that's you. what he did to us yes yeah. thank mm. you sandra um i met rabbi Sachs several several times over my time in jewish education in fact his wife elaine grew up, i knew her as a little girl because i was from wilston i was friendly with her brother david so uh, i sort of followed her through as it were to the to the great heights that she's achieved now and we met rabbi Sachs lots of times he used to come into the schools and he would sometimes be you you'd look at him and look very serious but the moment the children were within sight of him this big smile came on his face and he, he he just came to life i mean alan and i went to tea at his house um with, with in hamilton terrace with um other head teachers of jewish schools and when he was talking about jewish education to him it was the most important thing that was the future of, of the uk of jewish uh, community uh, uh, that's that's our memory of him that he was that he was passionate about it that was that was my experience of him um i met him on two occasions in in that capacity um one was when um, I graduated from Jews College, as it was then, um, having done the part-time teacher's diploma, uh, which you needed to have in those days to teach at Cheda. Um, and he was the Dean of Jews College then. And um, he uh, was always very excited with the new crop of teachers that were coming through. Um, and then it must have been about 15 years ago um, when um, we opened Yavna College. Um, and he was very instrumental in supporting um, the opening of the school, um, uh, not, notwithstanding the fact that the um, 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 United Synagogue was less uh, supportive, he was exceptionally supportive in the background. And once we'd opened the school and we'd set up the, um, the permanent governing body, as it was, as it became, um, he invited us all to Hamilton Terrace and spent the best part of about an hour and a half just chatting with each of us about our roles and, you know, um, and really, as Cathy said, I mean, education to him was um, the most important thing. Um, and the more schools, um, as far as he was concerned, that we could open, the better. Um, yeah. Thank you, Richard. Definitely. You know, and I think that's an incredible legacy to him. How many schools, you know, he was so involved and so passionate in and, and they'll always continue with that, that excitement, enthusiasm and blessing from him and, and continuing his, his mission, really. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And one, sorry, one of the things I remember going to see him at Hamilton Terrace was that you had to get through the security guard and it was all very, very serious. And he came in and he, 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 was, he was quite frustrated about it. The first thing that you experienced coming into his home um, was this really, um, as far as he was concerned, over the top um, response. Um, you know, he wanted a warmer... Uh, to be able to give you a, a much warmer greeting than you actually got. Uh, you kind of got made to feel as though, you know, you were in inconvenience by the security guard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we were, I don't know. But <laughs> I think that was the amazing thing as well about him was his um, informality, even with him being such a philosopher and such an intellect and such a incredible inspirational person but he also was just you know he was just like a, a nice guy who was interested in whatever you were interested in he just had this very normal way about him i think very apart from him being a, a torah giant um i think also his his secular abilities appeal to the wider world and he was so highly re regarded and respected both within this country and, and in the wider world, um, you know, I mean, literally people around the world have paid tribute, which I think is is only fitting and a remarkable uh, uh, testament to, to, to him as a person. Definitely. And, 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 not, and not just within the Jewish world, of course, no, he, he, he was respected right across religions and yep. uh, all denominations. In fact, we, we, we even saw a WhatsApp today um, from Northwood Shul, 
um, where apparently the, the local imam paid a most magnificent tribute to him. Absolutely wonderful. And comments that we've seen also said what a mensch this imam was, um, you know, speaking on behalf of the local Muslim community, um, you know, to, to express such wonderful sentiments. Definitely. Anyone anyone else would like to to share? Yeah, I was chat oh, sorry. Go on, Lily. Uh, I was chatting with my mum today and he was always very supportive. My mother was very active communally. And mum said the one thing that she always felt was he was so supportive of everything that she she was doing she said that he whatever it was with his jewish education here a machina project in israel he was she always felt that he was on the other side of the phone that he that he would support what what community things she was doing and just after he he passed i know that um Chaim Perry from israel um knew it would be quite difficult for my mother and sent a most fantastic email which had the um the speech that um, Rabbi Sachs made at the opening of the Machina in Israel that mum had, mum and Joy Cohen had probably done together. And he spent most of it talking about the two formidable women that had got this going and that the men behind them, including himself, were just supporting actors. And it was just a phenomenal speech. And my mum just said she just felt we um, so supported communally that it made her want to do more communally so yeah really lovely story and thank you Lee that's really special anyone else want to share oh, no, no. I didn't have the pleasure unfortunately yeah. Did you ever meet him, Carol? No, unfortunately not. I met his wife. She was at Bushy Shore and she was very, very humble and spoke to us also as if we were on a par. She wanted to know a bit about South Africa and of course the past chief rabbi in South Africa was a British, of British origin and wanted to know if I knew him and um, <coughs> just opened a whole... Um, platform of discussion yeah. so yeah. It's really something just to say where's the couple who were in Cape Town at a wedding near um what's a mayor? yes we're here are you there okay yeah, that yeah. Was key point a block away from where I was brought I was born and brought up wow. so I went to mama dinner a bit late but still okay, okay. Sorry to just to get that in while I've got the platform of course, you have to share your South African nachas, of course. Thank you. Our pleasure. I don't know, there's so much heritage here. I think I've got to learn more here, never mind share my South African issues. No, I think it's lovely. Everyone can bring something to the pot. I think that's the that's the point, isn't it? And Thank you. That's generous of you. Where is your husband this evening? Um, I hope he will be joining us soon. And he might even share with us where he's been. He's, he's somewhere very special, but um, I will let him when he comes. He did say he was studying on a Thursday. Yeah, but not in the evening. Not in the evening. But I, he might he might join us. It just, it depends what time he, he is able to. I will, when he he's comes, on, I'm sure he'll make himself <laughs> known. But I'm sure he's also drawn in many directions. Um, I, I've got a small question, uh, Jacqueline. I mean... I presume that he was actually laid to rest in the new part of the of the uh, bushy yes. cemetery. Yes. But not in a any special place. Is he just in a normal row, or did he get I, a? I assume he would be in a special place because I know in the in the old bushy there's a part yeah. at the front, isn't there? And in yes. in Wilson as well, there's an area. So I'm assuming he will be in an area um specifically for him. But you know, I mean. One of the very interesting things, which, you know, COVID is just a very strange time, we know, for all of us. But yeah. one of the things I think that we're, we're trying to do is to find kind of the, the silver linings, I guess, for want of a better phrase. But in a way, for the family, what would have otherwise been probably hundreds, if not thousands of people yeah. at Leviah, 
was a very, very intimate affair. Did people, were you able to see the Hespadum? Have people had a chance to watch them? Yeah. yeah. I, I found, you know, some of them were um, so emotional. When yeah. you heard the way Dime Binstock spoke about their friendship and, you know, the way he was. And for me, um, I was so impacted by Lionel saying mm. that, you know, he never spoke about people. He never spoke Lush and Hurra. It just, it wasn't him. He was not interested, you know, it, it, when you're involved in community politics, it's people. That's what it is. But he didn't, that wasn't what he was interested in talking about. No. You know, he was talking and his daughter said about, you know, while the kettle boils, solving wild anti-Semitism. And I, mm. I could so imagine him doing that. Yeah. You know, it was, that's beautiful. what he was. He just, he just, he, he believed in bigger things than, you know, the, the, the minor ideas of, of bickering about someone or gossiping about someone or that just wasn't who he was. Um, but I think the idea of um, him having, or his family having that private time with him in mm. some way must be painful because obviously he didn't get the Levi that was fitting him. But on the other hand, it's very special that he was surrounded by just his nearest and, and really, really just his closest, closest yeah. family and and you know colleagues and things. But, it, um, but in some respects, you could imagine that that he would have quite liked that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Know, he wouldn't have wanted the fuss and the fanfare yeah. and the yeah. uh, you know yeah. everything that would would have gone along yeah. with it. Um, yeah. Because he he was still quite a quiet and reserved uh, person. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so there's a few things, Richard, that, and actually it connects with Carol as well, that I've been thinking about. First of all, in terms of, you know, people talk about the fact that um, Rabbi Sachs wasn't, wasn't the most outgoing or people's person, person. But if you listen to all the stories that everyone's talking about now, it's not about the Templeton Price speech and all his YouTube videos and all his, you know, books and all the intellectual things he's shared. People really feel very touched by all those little personal things he did whether it's Stuart like you described you know that time he put his arm around your shoulder or you know someone I've seen people posting pictures taken with him that he took the the time to take a picture with their child and really speak to them or listening to the kids singing and actually yes he wasn't you know the most not out outgoing but you know he wasn't like the 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 I don't even know how to say, you know, the sort of person he was. He was probably a bit more of an introvert, but not really. You know, he he touched people's lives in the most amazing way. But um, Carol, I think the other thing which you pointed out, which is so indicative of him, that actually knowing Lady Elaine is the most incredible way of getting an appreciation of who Rabbi Sachs was. So the fact that we were so fortunate to welcome her in the community, and like you said, that you joined her. I remember when we uh, when I was asking her questions, and one of the questions was, you know, who's the most important, impressive person you've met? And she's met everyone, you know, like, and not just met, but spent time with good friends with, you know, Prince Charles and, and the royal family and prime ministers mm -hmm. and ambassadors and movie stars and like everyone, everyone, everyone. And she was just really impressed by ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And I think that, that that was Rabbi Sachs. You know, his everything was something he could learn from. Every person he met was someone interesting that he could share something with. In Pirkei Avot, we say, you know, who is the wise person? We say it's someone who can learn from everybody. And I think the testimony to Rabbi Sachs's wisdom isn't in the books that he's left behind. It's not in the videos even of him speaking. Of course, he was an incredibly clever man, an incredibly articulate man. He had a way of sharing things that, you know, no one else did. But the fact that he could learn something from every book he picked up, every piece of music he listened to, every film he watched, every person he spoke to, that's when Pirkei says, who is the wise person? That really is Rabbi <laughs> Sack. You know, I really think that that is, that is who he was. And um, for us personally, as a rabbinate, one of the most wonderful things was when we first joined was when we went on the rabbinical conferences. So we'd have lectures and he'd give a share and he'd discuss ideas and things like that. But we would have in the evening, there would be a chance to have a kumzit. 
Where kumzitz comes from the Yiddish words kumzitz, come and sit. Ah. And a kumzitz is where you sit and you sing. And he would share songs with us and tell stories. And his stories were second to none. <laughs> the way that he could take the simplest thing or the most complex thing and turn it into a life lesson was just unbelievable. And, and I think, you know, what, what I was reflecting in terms of the, the Levaya and his family, having such a public life, I think, Richard, you're right, the gift of actually what mattered the most to him was clearly Elaine and his family, right? How many times did he say, Elaine and I, or this is Elaine who did, and everything was about what she allowed him to do and what they did together. Um, it's like we say about Rabbi Akiva, we say um, um, in the Gemara, it talks about Rabbi Akiva and it talks about his wife, Rachel. And Rachel was coming towards Rabbi Akiva when he came with all his students and he was a very, um, he was a very accomplished scholar. He was the head of the generation and he's coming towards his wife, Rachel. And the, his students don't realize who this woman is. And they were very poor. She was, a, she looked like a beggar coming towards, you know, holding on to him, bowing at his feet kind of thing. And they want, his students want to get rid of this pesky woman who's in the way. And he says, no, no. He says, Sheli v'shelachem, all my Torah learning and all your Torah learning, Shelahi, it all belongs to her. And I think that that, that kind of dynamic of knowing how to be able to be there for each other. Um, you know, I was just listening, Rabbi, Rabbi Nick shared an incredible clip from Boca Raton. If you haven't listened to it yet, again, please make sure you listen to it this evening. Um, but um, it was recorded in 2018, but it has never been shared before. And he speaks about how you deal with failures and successes. And he says, one of the most important thing is that you marry someone who really believes in you. And that, you know, that is just who they were and what they represented. And at one of the training events we did, I think, quite near the beginning of when we entered the Rabbinate, Rabbi Sachs spoke about how to make sure that you put in family time and time for yourself and self-care. And when Rabbi Sachs is saying that to you at the end of 22 years of being in the Chief Rabbinate, you think, no, really? You know, he did everything for everyone. He wrote so many books and he was in so many different places. But he was the one telling us, this is the strategy, this is what you should do to make sure that actually you prioritize your family and you prioritize yourself and the things you want to do. And you don't just let life take over. And, and the norm, you know, going back to how I started, the, the normalcy of who he was, the fact that he, 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 he just got it and he was so normal with it is something that really resonates and and will stay with me forever you know his his tip was when you look at your year ahead you know whether it's in january on the summer holiday first put in all the days when you want to make time to do certain things so whether it's to go on holiday for him it was to write his book right his two weeks to write a book who writes a book in two weeks <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but his, you know that was that was his golden time so he said you you block it up with colors and you make sure that it's already in your diary and i you know for me i don't mind if you're if you're 20 or if you're 80, that's just such a wonderful way of looking at life. And, you know, who better to tell you that than one of the busiest people in the world? You know, the chief rabbi was saying to us, make sure you put that time in first because it won't just happen. It won't just fit in. And, you know, just lessons like that, that, that he, he just knew what really mattered. And actually, in a way, having him surround, yes, there wasn't, you know, Prince Charles wasn't at his funeral. I'm sure he would have been in normal times. But yeah. the fact that actually when he was being escorted to the next world, it was really surrounded by what was most important to him, which is his family, um, in, in a way is very, very special. Jacqueline. Oh, wonderful. Elchanan. Hi. Um, apologies, everyone, for... I mean, well, I'm not really apologizing because you, you got I didn't Jacqueline, tell. But... I, I didn't tell everyone where you were. I wasn't sure if I was allowed to, but you, you can share if you'd like. Um, yeah, so uh, apologies for not being here. Um, I had the great honor of speaking at the Shiva for, for Rabbi Sachs um, this evening. So um, uh, I, I was representing all, all of our community. Um, Thank you. Very, very hard to have the words to be able to, to share. Uh, but they, 
I think obviously we're, we're moving towards the end of the time of the session. I think the reason why they asked me to speak, besides for the fact I'm charming and you know good looking and everything like that, <laughs> and, and, and modest, and modest, and modest, modest. modest. <laughs> yeah. um, but but uh, the fact that he's good looking and he's modest. <laughs> he says, <laughs> keep, 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 keep repeating. Come on now, people. Let him. It might sound more sincere. Um, <laughs> but, but besides for that, the reason why I was asked to speak was principally because he he invested so much in the young in the young rabbin that to pass on the baton, um, you know, to pass on his mm. his his teachings, his his outlook, his openness, his grandness, uh, his um, his his hope. That's probably one of Rabbi Sachs's most important words. It's the difference between optimism and, and hope. Optimism, we just think things are going to be good. Hope is we believe we can help make things good. And, and his hope. Of, so I, I was asked to, 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 to be there to, to basically, in my own way, tr show that the commitment has been made by, by myself and my colleagues, by, through our communities and through the work, the work that we do. To, uh, to to ensure his legacy um, lives on. And, and, you know, this isn't one of those that you, we can outsource to the West or to the East, um, to the right or to the left. He was our chief rabbi. And um, we were his nachas. So it's our responsibility. Good. Elchanan, do you want to share maybe just one one story or, or one one yeah. one uh, thing that we could kind of take from from the lesson? I know we're running out of time, but <clears throat> as we started a bit late, and and since you you came late as well, maybe yeah. do you want to share something? Yeah. Um, you know, the, 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 some of 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 what made the chief rabbi, the chief rabbi, Rabbi Sachs, the very chief rabbi, uh, was his capacity to learn from anyone. And uh, I found that that out firsthand when, when I gave, uh, when, at my induction in Belmont, and obviously um, I'm inducted to, uh, you know, to my first real experiences in the, in the United Synagogue. Uh, I shared the Dvar Torah. It was to introduce the leaning. The theme was actually about rugby. Now, between me and you, I don't know that much about rugby. <laughs> but, but, the, the metaf but the metaphor made sense. So, um, the, the concept made sense to me that if you look at rugby from the outside, it just looks like a bunch of people jumping on top of each other. Mm -hmm. but, but, if you have a, a, but if you allow yourself to have a bird's eye view and to appreciate what's happening, um, you know, there's something, um, something special so this is rabbi Sachs. really just, just kind of um really quantify what he did he then gets up to speak at my induction a few minutes later and he turns to the 350 people whatever it's there maybe, maybe more and he said you know rebel Hanon just shared this idea about rugby and then he starts taking my idea making it a million times more profound and significant than I ever possibly could, and giving me complete credit as if I had, I, I as if I had just taught him the most genius concept that that's ever existed, <laughs> made me feel amazing. He made me feel that that I am someone who has something to teach, and even the great Rabbi Sachs wants to learn from me. And the amazing thing, that, that's brilliant, you know, in front of my community. A few weeks later, I happened to be in an event where Rabbi Sachs was speaking again. And he used my idea again. To, to, it wasn't a shtick. It wasn't like, you know, him just trying. This is who he was. He, he genuinely valued every, what everyone had to offer, believed in everyone, and made us believe in ourselves. And, and for myself and for Jacqueline 
um, for for the cats. Uh, the, the idea that we uh, one of my most one of our most profound truths is that brilliance and um, and 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 genuine greatness is in every single one of our congregants. We can see it. We just need to help them see it. And a job of a rabbi or a rabbitson is not to sculpt someone in the image we want to make. It's to help chip away so that people can see the image which is inside of them that they might not be able to see. And then, and this is the most important part, once they get that, to share with them, now go and share with someone else. Help them see their greatness too. Help them appreciate, help, help someone else appreciate what's inside of them and what's worth believing in and, um, and, and being proud of. We're all uplifted by this man. We lost him way too early. Uh, but there's a great motivation to continue his legacy. Yehi Zichro Baruch. May the memory of Rav Yaakov Tzvi ben David Arye uh, be a blessing for our community. We'll have opportunities in the near future to have a proper memorial and to uh, dedicate much of what we do in his memory, not simply to honor him, but because we are duty bound to do so. And, and that's the greatest gift that he gave us, the sense of responsibility and the ability that we can take that responsibility and do something great with it. Okay, thank you very much everyone for hanging on for thank a you. bit longer. Thank you very much, Amanda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you all. Um, you know, as I said, we we left last Shabbat with this with this very sad news. Um, hopefully, through all the incredible things we've been watching this week, listening to this week, hearing this week, reading this week about Rabbi Sachs, please God, we should take some of that inspiration into this coming Shabbat. Um, in terms of, of making us better people, because we each have so much that we can learn from him. Um, Rabbi Nick, did you want to? No. Okay, great. Um, thank you all for <laughs> joining us. Um, and as Elchanan said, you know, it, it makes so much sense that our BLT series is in Rabbi Sachs's memory. And please God, our youth will be doing something in Rabbi Sachs's memory. Not just because we're looking for random things to connect to him, but actually everything that we're doing is part of what his mission was, to spread the love and joy of our community, of Judaism, of spirituality, of connectivism with, amongst all of us. And please God, you know, we should be able to do that in his memory. Um, tomorrow, about an hour before candle lighting, there is going to be Kabbalat Shabbat. Hope to see everybody there. Um, Sunday's a very exciting day because it's mitzvah day. So please yeah. get involved. There's something that everyone can do from their home or from going, popping into Flax or Kelman's. But there's really is so much that everyone can get involved in. So I really hope that we can all continue all the wonderful goodness that's been going on in our community and, and keep it keep it going. Wishing you all a Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.